it felt like we took a chance here. Everyone was nervous about it and excited about it at the same time, which is a very great place to be as an artist, actually. Well, making last round was, was many, many years ago. And I keep returning to that film because I feel it represents a purity that you naturally lose over the years, a purity that I like and that I find precious somehow. But it went from our hearts where a film belongs to our brains. And we started to speculate and we did that for a year. And then everything fell apart. And then finally, I just wrote a script in effect in a very short time. And therefore it became sort of very unprotected, unpretentious and naked. And there was something in that that I've been pursuing ever since. Now, then you asked me, how did it feel to be nominated a student Oscar? The film was a big success and my first success. And I remember showing the film, I was very, very fearful about showing my film back then. I, I really like making movies, but I kind of hate showing them. Until, of course, if you're lucky enough, there's a great ovation and people like your movie. And, uh, and that was the case here. This was the first time I realized, okay, maybe there's something about me and making movies that, that is right. Another round was strange because we did not have a story. We had an idea of celebrating alcohol to begin with, which, was, which very quickly became too narrow and too provocative in a offensive way, we felt, to people who've suffered from alcohol. We felt actually a, res a responsibility, which probably I wouldn't have felt in my 20s. And I also found it more fascinating to make the, a whole, to involve the dark side of, of drinking. We realized that in world history, a lot of fantastic accomplishments have been done by people who were drunk. And that was definitely a story we wanted to tell. But we also wanted to tell that families have been destroyed and people have died from this. But we got more ambitious. We ended up wanting to make a movie about living as opposed to just existing. And this was a highly unusual script to write and very difficult. Or I guess all scripts are difficult. Uh, I've never written an easy script. I've, I've written a quick one, which was the celebration. This, this one was difficult because it did not want to be curated. It did not want to be stringent. It did not want to be a whole. We suddenly had a musical scene, a tender scene with our main character crying and with artistic ambitions of sound disappearing and music starting in the background. It was pointing in so many different directions. And every time we tried to even it out, which worked for us in the hunt, but every time we tried to even this one out, we killed it. It was a castration. It had to be this untamable bastard pointing, or, or you can say a cocktail, if you, if you want to be more refined, of all sorts of flavors. And the more it was pointing in different directions, the more honest it became somehow. That scene is a great example of something that have happened throughout my career a couple of times, which is, it goes like this. You sit next to someone and you say, what if this and this? And the other person goes, oh no, that's, that's crazy. That's too far out. And then you end up doing it. It, it. it felt like we took a chance here. Everyone was nervous about it and excited about it at the same time which is a very great place to be as an artist, actually, because it makes you super alert and super uh, thorough. And it puts you on your toes. It puts you on thin ice, actually, basically. And that's a great place to be. And we felt on thin ice with this scene. So we felt excited about the possibility of Matt's dancing, obviously. I knew he could dance. No one had ever seen it. Um, and this is a movie about letting go of control. And it's a movie about yearning for the youth and the weightlessness of the youth. So making him fly through dancing was an obvious possibility. 
yet still it could be so ridiculous and could fail so badly and could be so private and so much about Matt's instead, instead of the character and so forth. And, you know, my co-writer, he's a reality rules kind of guy and Matt's is too. So they were, they were constantly testing me and I represented the person protecting the idea. I think the only w- way this came through was because we have faith in each other. And Matt's has faith in me, we're friends. We've had success before. So this mutual trust gave him the courage to do what I think was very courageous of him. But if you look at the scene itself, you can see that he's toing and throwing a little bit. He's dancing and then he's retreating and then he's dancing a little bit more and he's retreating. That's obviously in the script. It's all scripted and choreographed, but it also describes the process of convincing him. And it also describes the key element of this movie is to dare letting go of of control and dare to fail through letting go of control. And I think the scene ended up being a cathartic, ecstatic celebration of the youth and of a lot of things, and yet still full of so much grief. Uh, So yeah, it was a fantastic scene to shoot, actually. It was a very joyful and emotional moment. This film is, I guess, an ode to my country. This film is in love with my country for good and for worse, I think. We do have a very specific, very liberal drinking culture. But what I think is interesting is, is the specificity. As, as a writer or a filmmaker, you would want to be specific. The specificity is key and you would want to avoid the general. It seems like every time you become general, people lose interest. And every time you become very specific, people dive into it. I've been watching all the foreign films, or they're now called the international films this year in the Academy. And you can have, there's so many great examples. Minari, which is about a very specific plant and a very specific uh, culture, a pocket of culture in a very specific country um, is, is another example. One of the points that proved to me that I have to make this movie was when I had an American writer visiting me in my country and she meets my daughter and she says, so what are you going to do today? And she says, "Uh, I'm going to do the lake run. And and she says, oh, but what's that? And my daughter says, well, we have to run around a lake, 3.2 kilometers and empty a box of beer. And this American woman looks at me, when is the dad going to interfere? (laughs) I'm Danish, so I'm not interfering. I'm used to drunken kids in the street. What about the police? And I says, oh, but the teachers are there. So it was like, uh, I I suddenly saw this American mirror of our society. I don't think we drink more, but we drink more public. In America, you put the bottle in a brown bag. We just don't do that. And um, uh, well, hence Danish drinking culture and specificity. It starts with a, an, a sense of necessity, something you're in love with. And then I try to reject it. And if it comes back to me enough times, then I embark on it. Then writing a movie becomes a strange combination of a lot of hard work and some free flying. The only way you can fly free is if you've done your hard work. You need to find the structure so that you feel that there's a solid foundation for yourself. And within that, you can do irrational things, things that are unexpected, things that makes it alive and makes you uh, surprised as an audience. 